All right, my friends, we're going to talk about a fair analysis of a variable annuity contract that a client of mine had received and he wanted me to look at it, which I was, be great, I was happy to do that. Let me turn this down. There we go. Uh, because there's a lot going on in variable annuities. And I, I'm not one of these guys that, like Ken Fisher or all these other uh, financial planner extraordinaires that says you should never buy a variable annuity. I've sold them myself. Um, we have some, uh, back in the old days, they actually had a value to there that a lot of people overlooked in terms of the actual cost, what you're paying relative to the benefits that you're getting. Um, not sure that's the case anymore, frankly, simply because I'll share with you right now. There are pros and cons about variable annuities, uh, a whole lot more cons than pros, which is what I'll dive into. But I don't want this to be in a bashing of variable annuities because a lot of people have them. A lot of people are interested in them, um, and I'm going to share you why some of the re reasons you might be interested. I'll share with you some alternatives here, uh, but I'm going to share the costs and why you most likely you should steer away from them for sure. And, and there's really, I, I just, it's hard for me to see a reason why you'd want a variable annuity, but there are, there are a couple, and I'll share those with you. So as always, welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning, the place where you come to learn all about variable annuities and how they may, may or not fit in with your overall retirement plan. So don't forget to subscribe, of course, and then comments, thumbs up, and uh, hit the a bell to be notified for future content. Right, now, let's see what we're, let's uh, look at what we're looking at here. Let me get my trusty, there we go. All right, so this is a Jackson National annuity, variable annuity contract that uh, the client took out in 2000, in, uh, January of 2017. They put 214,000 in it, it's now worth 251,000, all right? Uh, so the contract value, that's, <laughs> That, that is not your walk away money. That's just what the account says on the statement today. So they started with 214, is worth 251. That's actually not so bad. Now, the uh, Vanguard total stock market index would be worth about 273 over this time, um, but a more diversified portfolio of uh, Vanguard would be worth you know, probably 260 or so. So this isn't bad, but that's not your walk away money. Withdrawal value is less than that because you still, these folks are still knee deep in a seven year surrender charge. And I, look, I don't have any problem with seven year surrender charge. As long as you know that's what you have, I, I don't have any qualm with it whatsoever. In fact, I'd even argue, Meb Favor talks about this a lot in his podcast. Uh, if we had a portfolio that says you cannot touch your money for 10 years, that portfolio would probably outperform the vast majority out there because there's no way for you to buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell uh, based on your, the, how your emotional level of the day you woke up in the morning. So I have no problem with surrender charges, none, as long as you know it. Uh, but anyway, this does have right now still a 5% surrender charge off this balance right here. So your withdrawal value for the cash this guy out today would be $238,000, uh, which is still uh, $24,000 more than what you put in. So not so bad, but you know, don't do that. Uh, a variable annuities come with a death benefit, all right? And that death benefit is two fifty one. dollars And I'm going to talk about this death benefit because this is one of the things that are, are incredibly expensive that don't do anything for you. And I'm going to talk about that. So regardless of what happens to this contract value, if the contract value drops in half, all right, so we get a market crash like we had in 2007, October 2007 and March 9th of 2009, that's benefit 251. So regardless of what happens here, the contract value, if it goes down in half, if you got hit by a bus, your spouse or your heirs or whomever you want it to be, your church will get this amount right here. Oh, you might be able to see I haven't shaved today, sorry. Too busy playing, uh, watching my kids play sports. Um, all right, so that's interesting, and there's a cost of that. You have a guaranteed income right here. So you're guaranteed 4% of this amount right here, all right, and that's guaranteed for the rest of your life, $10,000 a year. Now, what happens with this guaranteed income? As you get older, it goes up to 5%, and it goes up to 6%. And so I think the client here is 65 years old, 64, something like that, 62. Uh, so she's only guaranteed 4% of this amount here, but as she gets older, the amount that she's guaranteed as withdrawal rate increases, and hopefully this will increase as well. So let me shot, sh stop with that real quick. That's the contract as a whole. It won't be free and clear of any surrender charges for another four years, and then it will be wide open for her to take out as she sees fit, which uh, which might be probably uh, beneficial to her. But let's, let's dive into Let me get this guy a little bit more here. All right, so that's the variable annuity contract in a nutshell. Now... A couple of things I want to go over with you here on these variable annuity contracts. All right, so let me just bring up, we talked about the uh, the death benefits. So I want to share with you the fees on this guy, and I'm just going to go, I'm going to, sh 
uh, has, so it has withdrawn. Well, I'm not going to show you the surrender charge. The surrender charge is seven six five four two two one and zero, and I'm not going to write that down. I'm just looking. I have the contract right from me, so I'm looking at that. Uh, we have an M and E charge, a mortality and expense fee of one point two five percent. All right. So first and foremost, we have mortality, what's called a mortality and expense fee, M and E charge. We also have an admin fee because I guess you're paying for the administration cost of this. Point, what's that? Point one five percent. All right. We also have a thirty dollar contract maintenance fee if your account is worth less than uh, fifty thousand dollars. Maintenance. Oops, I should probably put that over here. Bear with me just a second. So maintenance fee on top of your administration fee. Oh boy. Now it's just a flat 30 bucks a year if your account is worth less than $50,000, all right? Now this one was not because it's 250, but yeah, you still need to know about the fee. Uh, we have investment options, which are ranging from 0.56 to 2.19, all right? So let me go over here. Investment fees. Point five six to two point one nine percent. That's not it, my friends. We're not done yet. All right. So, and that, and then the guaranteed death benefit is the greater of the contract value or uh, the net premium. So the money you put in there, and this is before any surrender withdrawals. All right. So your guaranteed death benefit is the greater of how much you put in there or the contract value at your death. All right, so as you can see here, oh, in the death benefit option, highest anniversary value death benefit, which is what they chose. So we have a, what's called a step up death benefit or a uh, death benefit benefit option equals another 0.25%. So if your contract value goes from 251 to 280, you're going to lock in at the end of the year, you're going to lock in that death benefit, which is nice, but that's another 0.25%. We have the living benefit options, which is the suite of uh, the, we have living benefit options. So we have a death benefit at your death and a living benefit is the cash. That, remember we talked about that 4%? That 4%, you can take 4% a year out at a certain age and 5%. Those have a fee too. And uh, and that's, uh, let's see, what is that? 1.35%. All right. So let's calculate all these fees here. And let's just say, and we'll say this is 1.2, which is the average for an actively managed fund. All right, so we're gonna calculate all these fees here. I take my trusty calculator and we take, so you see I got my trusty calculator, so you know I'm doing it right, not just in my head. 1.25, 0 0.15, that's 1.4. Oops, 1.4, we take uh, 1.2, we take 0.25, and we take 1.35. So all in, I don't know if y'all can see that, that's 4.2%. That's a 4.2% fee on all in. And there's other fees you can add to it if you want to. If you want to do a lifetime stretch, whatever that is, I don't know. And that frankly, it scares me to even think about it because it adds another 0 0.87 basis points. So the fee on this guy is 4.2% all in. The counts were $251,000 right now. All right, so let's take my trusty calculator again and see what that can do for us. 251 times 4.2% 4, 4 costs us $10,500 in fees. Now, this is an honest assessment. This isn't me saying that variable news are evil like Ken Fisher or anything like that, Ken Fisher. This is me literally just reading the perspectives I'm looking at right here. 
And I'm saying you're getting, uh, it's cost you $10,500 of fees, none of which is deductible. Um, growth and income funds, so you see that coming out. So remember, 4.2% <laughs> is what it's costing you uh, for this contract. So let's just write this up here, 4.2 total fee, all right? Because we're going to refer back to that here in just a second. I also want to talk about the 1.25% M&E. And let's just put this like that. And then the 0.25% death benefit. All right, so that's 1.5% is, is your basically a life insurance amount. All right, a, a fee. Why do I want to point that out? Because when you die, you're going to get the greater, your heirs are going to get the greater of your contract value. And right now it's 251 or the premiums you put in minus any withdrawals you've taken. So we haven't taken any withdrawals, so we're just going to say premium 214. All right, so they're going to get the greater of the two, whichever is greater. In this case, your contract value is 251, so you're going to get your contract value at your death. Now, which so think about this. You're paying 1.5% for a death benefit. Now, are you getting any death benefit here? Is there any death benefit if you die today? No, because you're going to get back, your, not you, but your heirs are going to get back exactly what the account is worth today, which is $251,000. No more, no less. And so you're paying for this right here uh, for, <laughs> to basically guarantee that you get no less than that amount. Now, what happens is, let's say the account grows to 280. We'll just use that for an example, okay? So now the account's at 280. All right, so you got the, your account value, CV is cash for your account value, is to a uh, cash value or contract value. That's what CV stands for. So now it's 280 is your contract value. But now the market falls, we'll say 25%. So let me get my trusty calculator, 280 minus 25%, which means it's down at 210. All right, so 25% decline down to $210,000. Now we have this step up benefit here, a 0.25%, which means at the when we die, we're either going to get the maximum amount of our contract value at the highest percentage it was at the end of the year. In this case, it's 280, or we're gonna get how much we put in, which is 214. Well, we're not going to get 214 anymore because that's we we have this contract benefit which says we're going to get $280,000. So we know for a fact at our death, the worst that our heirs are going to get is the amount we is the amount the contract is worth at its end of the highest year. So in this case 280, regardless of what the market did. So the market drops by 25%, we're still getting we're not get we're only worth uh, 210 at that point, but the death benefit at that point is 280. Hope that makes sense because it's critical to important to understand this. Your death benefit with these, uh, with the with the options that you can buy, guarantee. Now, not every contract is going to have this. Most will guarantee you're going to get the let the greater on your contract on your death. I mean, of the highest point on the end of the year or whatever your contract says, the highest point, regardless of what the preceding or the uh, the following years do, or the amount you put in. That's what they're going to. That's what they're going to get you. That's your death benefit. So again. We put in 214, it's only worth 210. The 214 is irrelevant anymore because we're paying for a, a, what's called a lock in death benefit, and now our death benefit is 280. All right, so hey, at the end of the day, you're like, look, you're still, no matter what happens to the money, we're still going to get 280. All right, well, 280 minus the contract value now. So the contract value is no longer 280, the contract value is actually 214. This is the death benefit, the contract value. So we take the two numbers and we subtract them. That gets $70,000, all right? Now, maybe you don't see where I'm going with this, but that's the life insurance amount right there. Life amount, insurance amount. Because I'm still, so my, let's just say I die. Charlotte gets 280. 210 of that is still my money. That is still my the cash value of my account, but they're going to make a, a contribution of $70,000 uh, to make it back up to here, 280 when I die. That $70,000 is no different than a life insurance. They're going to pay her a $70,000 life insurance proceed, which is not tax-free eat, by the way, just FYI. When they put that money in there, that's not a tax-free death benefit like a typical life insurance. 
So she's going to get $70,000. Does that make sense? On top of whatever the account value is worth for me. And so what does that tell you? Well, that says I am paying 1.5% for, for life insurance, by con how much it cost me for life insurance. I paid that on that amount right there, which is going to be, <laughs> so I start, so the, the, the year I paid 1.5% on $280,000 which means it cost me $4,200 in fees to cover $70,000 of life insurance. Does that make sense? That's critically important to understand. It took me forever for some reason because I'm blocking to understand this. So my account value is up to $280,000 and I had all these fees thrown in there. I am paying 1.5% on on that amount right there, which is 4,200 bucks a year. So that way my wife, when I die, will get an extra $70,000 kicked in on top of whatever cash value I had. Now, I hope you don't need to be, uh, you don't need to be a genius to understand 4,200 on an annual basis for a $70,000 life insurance policy. No one's going to buy that. You would never buy that in the open market just by buying a life insurance policy, which also happens to be tax free. Cause you say, if I'm spending $4,200 a year, I certainly want to get more than $70,000 as a life insurance. And I also want to make sure it's tax free as well. And you're not getting that there. So people say, okay, what if that fell to 140,000? Now we got a 40% decline or 50% decline. Now it's down to 140,000. Well, in this case, I'm getting $140,000 life insurance proceeds. So I got $140,000 my contract value plus $140,000 is what uh, Jackson Life is going to kick in, which means that she gets the whole two eighty. dollars still costs me $4,200 a year. And $4,200 uh, $4, a year for $140,000, worst case scenario, no one's going to say that's a good deal. It's not. It's a horrible deal. Without question, it's a horrible deal. And that's the that's the thing I have with these with these all these variable annuities is the mortality and expense fee on for a death benefit you're never going to use and if you use it the maximum is going to be in this case the worst case scenario which happens once every you know twice a century with a 50 percent decline the maximum you're going to get is you're going to cover yourself from half the portfolio value and if that is a concern you just go buy a life insurance policy if you can't qualify for a life insurance policy well that's going to be a problem. But you still, if you're going to save, if it's going to cost you $4,200 a year, don't even buy it. Just simply put that money that you're going to spend on this variable annuity, invest it in a pure growth account to make up the difference. So that way, if you do die, not only does your spouse get this amount of money, but she also gets that amount of money too. Simply because the life insurance is just way too expensive and it will hardly ever pay off. And the reason it will hardly ever pay off because the markets go up and they do. And so 1.5%, you can, you can scratch that immediately. Now, one thing I did want to point out, remember they put in $214,000. All right, that's your, that's your contribution, your premium. So what any kind of life insurance they call a premium, 214,000. I want to share this one thing with you here, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, and this would might be a place where it actually makes sense to do that. Now they're going to give you a, it costs you 1.35% for this fee, which I'm going to share with you here right now, which says they're going to give you right here a 2%, 200% GWB adjustment to increase your contracted balance. All right. So let me tell you what that means. They're going to say after, uh, after 12 years, if this account does not grow to 428,000, right? If it does not grow to 428,000, we're going to make sure after 12 years that you have $428,000 in which you can pull a certain amount of money for your guaranteed withdrawal benefit off. Um, let's see, which is going to be what? 5% a year. I think it was uh, 5% or five and a half, depending how old you are. So we'll just say, all right, so in this case, she took it out once she was 60, just for simplicity. Whichever is later, when you turn 70 or 12 years, we are going to guarantee that the money you put in will give you an income stream of twice the money you put in, uh, in this case, it would be 5% a year because you're 70 years old. And I hope that makes sense. That has an, an appeal to me, frankly. That would be one area I think it has a value there. So they're gonna say, no matter what happens, 
regardless of the market, we're going to guarantee that you'll get this 5% a year, not off this amount, but off this amount. So 5% a year off $428,000 for the rest of your life. $428,000 times 0.05 is $21,000 a year. We will guarantee you $21,000 a year, uh, no matter what happens. If this goes down to zero, you're going to get guaranteed $428,000 a year as your guaranteed uh, income benefit base, which has an appeal. I, I absolutely think it has that appeal. But that costs 1.35% too, which means that costs, uh, you know, just on the, well, right now it's on 251. So that's going to cost you on $251,000 as a contract value, 1.35%. That's cost you $3,400 a year right there. All right, so $3,400 a year for this benefit right there. I mean, and the problem with this on top of that is a lot of people overlook the fact that you're going to get $21,000 guaranteed for the rest of your life. There's no, necessarily, there will be no step up in terms of appreciation or anything like that. Now, they will say, kind of like these index annuities, that the contract value grows beyond the cash value that we're guaranteeing you here at $21,000 a year. Well, let's just say in a few years, your account's actually worth $450,000. Well, we'll guarantee you 5% of that as well. We're going to give you what's called a bump up. And you know, there's a value there for sure. If your contract grows more than the amount you're pulling the money out, we will guarantee you an increase in your basis for which you can pull that 5% of your income off. The problem with that though, with a 4.2 fee, your contract and you're starting to pull money out, you're pulling money at 21,000 a clip. Uh, so let me show you something, this is how it works. Because that fee is so heavy. Let's just say 12 years from now, your contract is only worth $375,000. $70, That's it. All right, but you have $428,000 as your income base. And so you get 5% a year of that for, because we have the 12-year fee. They gave us a 12-year thing where it says after 12 years, we'll double the amount you initially put in and give you 5% a year on that which gives us $21,000 a year in income, all right? But what's happened here? We still have that 4.2% fee on this right here, all right? So $21,000 a year in income on $370,000, that's a 5.6 distribution rate on this amount right here because we're getting to $21,000 of income but it's still, we have a contract value that has to support that income of 5.6% as a distribution rate. So now we got 5.6% coming out of here. On top of that, we got 4.2 fee. So 5.6 plus 4.2 equals 9.8% is how much is coming out of this account. There's no way at paying 9.8% a year that this is gonna grow anymore. What's going to happen is it'll slowly start to sink. You'll start getting less and less and less value, which in and of itself is not a bad thing because this will never go away. This $21,000 will be there for the rest of your life. But the idea that this money could grow and you could see yourself getting a bump up in your income stream is just silly. Not with a 9.8% withdrawal rate of which 4.2 is a fee and the $21,000 on the contract values is a 5.6. You're not going to make it. The contract's not going to grow at that point. The contract will steady decline. Now, the benefit of it, of the reason why these are have you know, some appeal, let's just say, you know, now you're 82 years old and the contract is worth $180,000. Well, you're still getting 21,000 a year, guaranteed. That, that will not stop, that will, go, that will never go away. Now, because the insurance company charge you a heck of a lot of money for that. So 21,000 at this point divided by 180 means you got 11.66% distribution rate. All right, so now it's 11.66% plus that 4.2% fee. What's that, 16% or something like that. And you, there's no way you're making any money. That contract at this point is gonna go down to zero. And even if it does go down to zero, you're still gonna get your $21,000 a year as a guaranteed income. That, that's a fact, that is what will happen. Regardless of what the contract value is, you're gonna get your 21,000 a year. The issue is your, your heirs aren't gonna get anything. It's just We need to scrap the idea that your heirs are gonna get anything, and we need to scrap the idea that that 21,000 a year of income could ever grow 
because the market does well. The market will never do well on any consistent basis to recover from that 9.8% distribution amount that's coming out, of which 4.2 goes to pays the fees, and the 5.6 was the initial distribution rate. Remember, we talked about that. You have $370,000, but you're getting 5% a year off $428,000 because that's what your contract value said. And I mean, there's a, I mean, for income, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. However, the alternative would be just to do an income annuity, a SPIA, a, 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 a single premium income annuity. Because if, if income is what we're shooting for, a SPIA is the best way to get the income. Because a SPIA guarantees that you're not going to have any death benefit left over, any account left over, other than if you do it for a period certain, like I talked about in other videos. You say, I'm going to do a SPIA for uh, 20 years life and period certain, which means at the end of the, the time, I know for a fact I will get, you know, I don't know, twenty five thousand dollars a year for my wife and I is alive, and if we die earlier than twenty years, our heirs will get twenty five thousand dollars a year until that twenty year term is up. If my wife lives for another a million years, she'll get twenty five thousand dollars a year for a million years. Will never change. If my wife dies in year three and I die in year ten, my heirs will get that twenty five thousand dollars from year eleven till year twenty, and then the contract will go away. At least in that case, we know for a fact what we're going to get. And because SPIAs are basically paying your principal plus they're paying uh, interest as well, there's no fees or anything like that, first and foremost, but we know for a fact what you're going to get. Here, we just, with, there's way too much upside potential they will never be realized simply because the fees are too high. And that's the thing with variable annuities. And this is what comes down to retirement planning altogether. Do I want income or do I want growth? If I want income, the best way to get income is a single premium income annuity, a SPIA. If I want growth, the best way to get it is just naked mutual funds or naked ETS, which have no uh, insurance proceed contracts or anything like that with minimal fees. The way to get growth is to reduce your fees. The way to get income is doing a single premium immediate annuity. There, and when you kind of try to split the difference and do both, you're getting inefficient on income, like I just showed you because the fees are so doggone high, and you're getting inefficient uh, on growth because, of, like I just showed you, because the fees are so doggone high. So you're not going to get either because you're paying, in this case, a huge amount for a death benefit, which will never matriculate. And even if it does, it's a small death benefit relative to the huge amounts of fees you pay. So the end story is, if you have an annuity, a variable annuity, uh, you got to find out the all-in fee, the mortality expense charge, the death benefit charge, the annual maintenance fee, uh, the annual contract fee. You need to find out if there's any other fees in there, including the expenses of the funds that they use as well. In this case, I was even giving the benefit of the doubt. I was saying 1.2, but they go as high as 2.19. And I'm just saying, look, we're just going to say the average fund expense in the United States is 1.24. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know that should be true. So your all-in fee here is 4.2% on top of the fact you have a significant surrender charge in the first upfront years. Now, lastly, <coughs> variable annuities, when they pay out, are taxable as ordinary income to your heirs. Regardless if it pays out as a death benefit, again, we talked about that $70,000 the insurance company will kick in, or if it just pays out as a contract value. Either one is included in your heirs' ordinary income. If it comes from an IRA, the entirety of the contract is included in their ordinary income as ordinary income. When you receive a payout from a variable annuity, it also be included in your ordinary income. That's just a fact, all right? Now, if it's an IRA, it will all be included if it's a non-IRA, non-qualified account, there is a cost basis. These guys put in 214000 Unfortunately, it was all from an IRA. So the entirety of the contract will be a taxable as ordinary income. So what I'm going to recommend these guys is when the seven-year surrender charge is up, uh, move that over to an IRA. Save that 4.2%. If they need income, we can devise a strategy on how to get income from the portfolio as opposed to putting a 4.2% wrapper I mean, that is literally a huge headwind that you'll never get all escape from for the, the costs associated with it. If it's a non-qualified annuity, that's a different story because they got 251 in there now. They start with 214. The difference between that $40,000 or so will be a capital gain. I mean, so I'm sorry, will be, uh, it will be taxable as ordinary income. And that's a drawback because when they sell it, they're going to get a distribution and annuities come out as ordinary income, not as capital gain. So we have an issue there to contend with which is why I say don't ever do a variable annuity. Don't ever do a variable annuity in a non-IRA account. Always do it in an IRA. But Josh, you don't get double the tax deferral. I completely get this. Without question, 
The issue is at the end of the day, when it comes time to move your annuity from an annuity to a cheaper, more growth potential product, or uh, I mean like an ETF of some sort, you can do with it without any tax consequence, without question, but you cannot do the same in a non-qualified account. So that's the story in annuities. They have a million different contracts, a million different pro uh, prospectuses, a million different you know, bells and whistles, and a million different ways to make, ways to make you pay more money. I, again, I don't hate them. I just stay away from them. They're not a good product, in my opinion, for either getting income or building wealth. They just aren't. Now, does that mean there's no good annuities out there? No, I'll let you figure out that. But at the end of the day, my inclination is just don't buy one. Either buy a pure SPIA single premium income annuity or buy a, just a low cost uh, mutual fund or ETF and you'll be served better by splitting those two things accordingly. All right, as always, if you have questions, thoughts, concerns, put them down below. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell your friends and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Dan.